Can we get the nuke? All right, we got the stagger. Can we get the nuke? Come on. Don't bury her. All right. See? It's pretty good, you know? It can it can do the things. It's strong. Please. <laughs> Believe me, it's strong. It's good. All right, we got charge bolts here. Let's go over it real quick. So the builds are starting to look pretty cookie cutter, but that's okay. We have our perdition, a lot of damage here. We have Raymond for grouping and stunning. You don't need to run Raymond. It just really helps. Uh, piercing static on the gloves. Ideally, you want crit chance, charge bolts, and attack speed. Lucky hit freeze is a little bit important because we want to utilize the hoarfrost. Uh, Passive in the skill tree. I'm a little frost lad. Uh, Orange Herald pants. Um, ideally, you'd get GA armor here, but because of the unique staff, we're a little low on life, and I heard the complaints have been heard that were filed about the fireball build having no health. So we fixed that. Uh, my ideal pair of pants would be GA max life GA armor with warmth tempers and a lucky hit chance to freeze. Uh, that way I could remove the points and warmth on the skill tree because I really because poison's really overtuned this season so I think it's really needed to heal through it next we have Rackanoth's wake um, ideally you want GA cooldown it's for the attacks reduce evade and it helps solve our resistances people keep asking how your resists are solved and it's through Rackanoth's they don't need to be GA as you can see I'm 50 per 40 50 percent overcapped everything's fine uh, Staff of Lamessen. Ideally, you'd have GA charge bolts here in, with a bunch of masterwork hits on it, but basically, you want masterwork hits on intelligence or charge bolts. Only those two live with the results. Um, I'm running Tam Ohm. Uh, cast the non channel core. Every 24 casts, I get a war cry that's 15% damage, and I'm a huge fan of. 
I'm a huge fan of uh, Dark Shroud Temper. Um, if you don't have Yule, it might even be better. You could run the one. I think it's Moni. Yeah, cast the skill after moving. Uh, that one's really good. But I'm just going to leave it with Yule Mott for now. But this one's a sleeper pick, Moni. Especially if you like fidgeting around. This thing is money. Uh, we have our amulet. Just do whatever you can get. Conch Mastery, Elemental Dominance, Devouring Blaze, Intelligence, Cooldown Reduction. Just get an amulet that's good. Throw Shredding Blades on it. Keep moving. Um, ideally, you'd have Crit Strike damage here. And then I'm leaning towards Evade Cooldown Reduction. But unfortunately, I can't change my temper. So I'm stuck with a resource temper of some uh, sort. So I took a uh, Familiar Duration. Uh, and then, yeah, Charge Bolts Pierce, Piercing Static on the Gloves. That's the only two offensive aspects in the build. And then we have Starless and Talrasha. I don't really need to explain these. It's pretty standard now. Um, skill bar is looking the same as the other ones. We have our two Conjurations, Spear and Ice Blades. And then we have two defensives, Ice Armor and Flame Shield. And then we basically have our offensives, Charge Bolts and Unstable Currents. And for enchantments we have teleport and ice blade enchantment and we are applying burning through the familiars made during unstable currents because they default to fire and all you need for that is to take this invoked node this enhanced node right here i'll do paragon real quick paragon's looking the same you take destruction or tactician on the starter whatever suits your fancy and then you move to Burning Instinct. You take Destruction or Tactician here. It doesn't really make a difference. I just have Tactician here. It's an easier path. I'm able to grab this DR from Elites and all this Crit Strike damage. Uh, Enchantment Master is really good. It'll drop your Evade cooldown by a lot. And it'll reduce the number of cooldowns that you need to press to get a free Ice Blade. There's a lot of good nodes around here. Attack speed, non-fizz. We take Elementalist. This is just a lot of really good damage. Next, we take Flame Feeder. I take this over Control because it's just not conditional. I like it dealing damage all the time. Another option here is Exploit. This is basically your flex, flex spot. You put Exploit, Control, or Flame Feeder here. This legendary node is just an auto-take. It's 30% damage. Really good rare nodes here. All, uh, all DR, crit strike damage, Vuln DR, the support's really goaded. Last but not least, I take Unleash. We don't need the mana regen from here, but I have it leveled up, and this is just the thing I always take on Frigid Fate, just because I always take it as my last board. Um, because, And I don't have to worry about if I'm not hitting the rare, ne uh, rare node Rex here, because I'm boosting the magic nodes. That's why I take Unleash last. Uh, and then the rest of this is just fluff, but we got your 60% damage from Frigid Fate. All right, I'm taking this into just this, a 75. This build will probably hard cap at T85. So that's why I'm taking it 10 under, so that it's a little bit of a better viewing experience. And I'll leave damage numbers on, just so you can see what kind of damage it's dealing. I don't know, everything's dying. It's pretty good. Hopefully they... Um, yeah, I'll be straight up. I'll never say, you know, I think this is like a B plus tier build. Like it did really well in that in that horde that I did. I was I was pretty happy with it. But this this guy's an issue. Why are you taking no damage? Now he takes damage. Something was going on with that. All right, we gotta we gotta start moving. Let's start moving. All right. That was a little rough start, but as you can see, it do be schmoovin'. Give me this artillery shrine. We are, sh as you can see, it's, yeah, it's schmoovin', baby. We are, we are moving through. So this build is no slouch. Got pit day. It's got pit struggles. Past past eighty, past eighty five. It's it's not the best. No fault, you know. And that's just that's on Blizzard for making the pit scaling too difficult. 
I think they're going to nerf it, the pits. I'd love to see them nerf the pits below 100. And then you can, like, you can leave pit 100 plus, like, hard. Well, yeah. As you can see, we have our little fire familiars going ahead of us, always making things vulnerable, always uh, applying burning, so that's really nice. And you can run Tyrials on this build if you want. You don't need Raiment. I would probably drop Teleport Enchant then. Maybe look into running Asus Boots. You'll see. I have I have some variants that are like that. Like pre-perdition, pre you run Asus. So you can just follow that. I, I have a I have a Tyrials version. For those who like don't like being this squishy. Because I get it. I don't like making builds like this. I don't like making squishy Raymond builds. That's not my style. But that's just what I feel forced to do this season. I'm doing the best I can. To try and make them not as squishy. Things may change when um, Shroud of False Death is finally added. Because that chest is really good. Oh yeah, we're gonna nuke this sea hag. We are just chilling, and this is why sometimes I don't run that Moni rune because sometimes I just like to sit still. I don't always want to be moving. I just want to sit like this and chill. You know, I'm just I'm hanging out. I'm having a good time. Boss damage is pretty respectable. Uh, it can handle a lot of this, this, the the bosses. Like, uh, I'll probably throw a Durial in here. If you haven't already seen it, depending on where I placed it. Alright, I'll see you guys.